one of the biggest stages in the world of tennis. The tension within Rod Laver Arena is extraordinary. I'd like to thank Rod Laver Arena. I love you each year more and more. Listen to the noise. This is Sporting Theatre. There's nothing better than playing on this court. This is the best court in Australia. He's a perfect 10. History in the making. Let the celebrations begin. And once again, the centre of the tennis universe is Melbourne, Australia. And wherever you're watching around the world or inside here at Rod Laver Arena, we are set once again for a spectacular Australian Open. And opening week starts with a special match between Alex Dimonor, the Australian at number one, just inside the top ten now, and Carlos Alcarez, the Wimbledon champion, US Open champion from a couple of years ago, and it's great to have him back in the country. Welcome to this magnificent arena where so many special moments have happened in the past and we're about to see so many more here. Rod Laver Arena, roof closed tonight, beautiful conditions outside as well. It's a great place to be, Melbourne. So let's get it underway. We're about to start. Here it is, Alcarez and Alex Dimonor here on Rod Laver Arena. Let's bring out the players. You're feeling good, Carlos? Feel great. Ready. And the players are not too far away and as many we've got a great crowd in here at Rod Laver Arena this evening. Is everyone a little excited this time of year, ready to see the best tennis players do their thing? Are you really? Come on, give us a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, the best of the best are here. Uh, earlier tonight, we had Novak Djokovic. When we opened the doors for you people, he was going through his paces and he'll be involved in opening week festivities tomorrow night with a special night with Novak as well. We've got the draw to come later this week. So much happening in opening week before play starts for the first time ever at the Australian Open on Sunday. But let's bring out our first player this evening, a young man from Sydney who's won seven ATP Tour titles. He's led Australia to the last two Davis Cup finals. And finally, he's in that world top ten. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Dimonor. Demon, welcome, mate. And first of all, I know how much work you've put in, how much blood, sweat and tears have gone into it. Top 10, mate. Congratulations. Well done. How does that uh, go down with you? Yeah. Um, it, it, it is pretty special. I'm, I'm very proud of my efforts and I'm looking forward for the AO to start. What does this week give you? The, the week prep, getting everything right, um, getting everything ready for that first match early next week. Yes, look, it's about freshening up, getting ready, enjoying the moment, and, uh, you know, it's a bit, pretty big tournament coming up, so uh, I'll be ready. You'll be ready. I'll let you get ready right now, mate. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Dimonor. And let's get his opponent out then. We haven't seen him. We missed him last year so dearly. But since we last see, seen this gentleman in Australia, he's gone on and won a US Open. He's won a Wimbledon. And for a time, he became world number one, the youngest ever to do it from Spain, Carlos Alcaraz. <laughs> Welcome back to Australia. We, we missed you so much last year, and I, th I think you missed us as well with that hamstring injury. Yeah, I miss, uh, I miss Australia. Honestly, I really wanted to, to come here to play. 
Well, he had no great run in 2022, but uh, he enjoyed playing, playing here in, in Australia, here in Melbourne. So I, I missed uh, miss last year and uh, finally stepped here this year. Have you adjusted to conditions and, and tonight you play a guy who, you know, he just beat Novak, he's in good form? Uh, yeah, well, uh, this is uh, my second, second day, third day, so I'm, you know, getting, getting used to these conditions. You know, the summer here is uh, not easy and uh, obviously facing uh, Alex that, uh, you know, is, is playing great. He's uh, doing, you know, a great start of the season, beating great guys and uh, obviously breaking the top ten, so it's a uh, great warm up before the tournament is start and uh, let's see my level, where my level is. It's a real treat for us, mate. Let you get set. Ladies and gentlemen, Al uh, Carlos Alcaraz back in Australia. The hit-up is not too far away on this special night on Rod Laver Arena. Gentlemen, we've got electronic line calling. Yeah. I'll be calling the net. Is there any questions? Two tie break sets, match tie break or one settle. Any questions? No? We've got AO and Yvonne. So, with the Carlos, AO or Yvonne? Uh, and AO? We've got AO or Yvonne. Uh, we've got AO. AO, AO, sorry. AO, AO. Okay, I'm giving it in here. It's AO. Uh, receive. 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 This side. Okay, go back. Moments ago with the coin toss. Now, this is uh, Cleo Roney, nine years of age, and uh, she's part of why we're doing this this evening for the Australian Tennis Foundation. Now, Cleo, uh, not long, long ago, she survived leukemia, currently in good health, which is great to see. Big smile on her face meeting Alex Demnor and also Carlos Alcaraz. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they benefit from such great work thanks to the uh, Australian Tennis Foundation. The AO charity matches this week will go and help. The, uh, the Tennis Foundation to support brighter futures for kids through tennis. Now, to get involved and perhaps donate as well, go to ozopen.com forward slash ATF or just scan that QR code on your screen right now for all the information you want about the Australian Tennis Foundation and funds from tonight will go towards this 
really worthy cause and it's close to the heart of Australian Open organisers and everyone in Australian tennis, of course. So we're about set here. The uh, the roof has been opened up. Demonor and Alcaraz about to go at it in this special opening week match. And to call all the action, it's a very good evening to John Fitzgerald and Dave Colbert. Thank you, Adam. Well, the Demon has been a demolition machine with wins over Taylor Fritz, Alex Zverev and world number one Novak Djokovic at last week's United Cup. And the result of that, he's into the world top ten. Well, tonight is a different opponent, and Alex Demonor has the opportunity to let the world know that he means business in 2024. On the other side of the net, the 20-year-old two-time Grand Slam champion, world number two, Carlos Alcaraz. John Fitzgerald, there's the statistics. You love to see that world top ten. He's been in tremendous form. And this man, I, I know, we know him, we know him well, we know what he's done. But I blinked twice when I wrote down his age, 20, with all that he's achieved. Good evening to you. Good evening, David. It's so good to be with you. And he's like a precocious two-year-old right. horse, one that, one that wins those big races as a youngster. And he's been such an early developer, hasn't he? It's hard to believe he's only 20 at the moment still. But Demon or Alex, fantastic for Australian tennis, for him uh, personally, uh, for his family. He's achieved that top 10 status, but knowing him, it's only a launching pad in his mind. We don't know yet how far he can go. No, and he's, we know that he's a fast starter in Australia. He beat Rafael Nadal last year at the United Cup when Nadal was world number two, and his performances against Fritz Djokovic and then Zverev have been most impressive. Lost to Cam Norrie in his first match of the year. He's been a little bit of a slow starter, but that United Cup's been perfect for him. Can I suggest to you, Fitzy, that this match, on the basis of those results, this has been locked in for a couple of weeks, that this match changes a little bit for Carlos Alcaraz because Demonor now is a man on the rise. And you've got the world number two, has been number one, two-time Grand Slam champion, reigning Wimbledon champion. He's thinking, I don't want Alex Demonor to get comfortable in beating all of us. We're the best. One minute. Well, these guys that are the best, David, they always think like that. They they don't want anyone One to minute. beat them. But but I, I'm with you. I hear your sentiment there. Uh, yeah, Alex has improved. You know, we both saw him in Perth and in Sydney. He, he, he is a better player all of a sudden, it seems, than he was the last time we saw him live. And, and that's what young players have to do, continue to improve. So, yes... He's more on the radar for Alcaraz tonight. I don't think Maybe it's the end of the world here for Alcaraz if he loses to Demon sets. tonight. He's he's only At been here a few days. Will be he's he's still adapting Don't to the conditions to the left, and, and the time zone. So won't be the end of the world, but, but he won't want to lose. They never do. So they have met on two occasions in proper tournament play. The last one came in the Queen's Club final. 2023, Alcaraz won 6-4, 6-4. He got back to world number one, and then, of course, he went on to win the Wimbledon title. And before that, it was at Barcelona in a semi-final that went to three sets. That was in 2022. And we forget, of course, that uh, Alcaraz couldn't play last year in the Australian Open. So this is the one Grand Slam event that he's got a lot of upside for. He's been Wimbledon Anyone champion, know? US Open champion, semi-finalist at the French, but... Just a miserly third round at the Australian Open, Fitzy, and I think he, he's due for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> he well, says firmly tongue in cheek if you're watching this thing back. I'll tell you what's good as well the crowd in for this evening. We heard from Adam earlier, we we're raising money for the Australian First Tennis set. Foundation, but there's a good crowd in. Yeah, very. Great atmosphere, Alex beautiful Dimino. night, and uh, we're serve. going to enjoy some great tennis. Australian Open's back. Ready. It's going to be bigger than ever this year. Play. Play. So what's in this for Demon Hall tonight? Oh, I, just, I just started giggling there. You know, the great players, they just know how to play at the right time. I mean, this is Demon's stock standard delivery down the line and in. And that happens from Alcaraz. Just one little flick of the wrist. Not everyone can do that. I guess there's a reason he's won two majors at 20 years of age and he's been ranked number one in the world, David. Love 13. Well, it's, he's a special talent. 
there's no doubt about that. But I, I, going back to my point before, and I'll, I'll answer my own question, Alcaraz wants to dominate this. And I think there'd be a few in the locker room that would be cheering for him to do so as well. That's just... This is man-on-man -man stuff, Fitzy, as you know. Coming from a true competitor. Well, I just think that that's what, you know, Alex Demon was a threat now. He's, yeah, a, he's he, a contender for, for the title. And when, when yeah, that happens and someone rises, the, the others say, I don't think so. We, I like my little club here. I've got yeah. my space in the locker room and I, I don't want to welcome anyone else into it. miserly when they talk about having people in their little space 15. they all want space they want room to move in there and they don't like letting guys in but they respect guys no who knock on the door yep I'm not suggesting that there's no risk in fact there's a lot of respect and that's why that's th anyway it's going to be interesting it's a you know it's an exhibition match there's they're all about their preparation for next week and it's great that they're out here well, I just think it's got that little bit of extra on the basis of what Demon has been able to do over the past 10 days or so. Well, game over. So Karaz gets the early break. Well, Demon Let's missed the it. stock standard ball, didn't he, at 15.30, the one that you rarely see missed, the forehand approach. And, of course, the first point of the match... Alcaraz came up with a really special slice backhand down the line. So he's off to a good start. He's off to a fly. You can also tell from the first game how heavy he hits the ball. Sometimes it's hard to pick up on the, on the telly, on the TV. It is such a heavy ball that comes off his racket with, with speed and bounce and spin. Alex's Got ball is flatter than Alcaraz that. Alcaraz to serve. We refer to the age of Alcaraz, just 20, 12 titles already, six last year, two Grand Slam wins. It's a staggering collection at his age. Catches Demon or here leaning towards his backhand volley. So Demon comes in down the line. He starts leaning, I think, a little. Yes, he took a slight step to his left there, was thinking that was going across court because that, that was the more logical place for Alcaraz to go. But no, he's a special player. You know, it's interesting that the first two slams he's won, one of them is Wimbledon. So you'd, you probably would have expected him to win the French before Wimbledon, even though that's a, a more physical test in a way. But probably the surface you'd expect, logic says, that he might maybe do well in that one first. But it's hard to see, if he's healthy, how he can't win the other two. Oh. Oh. 
40-30. Bit of breeze down there. It's a regular occurrence. That one came off the frame. You can see that in slow mo. Forehand, this forehand across court here, you can't follow in. That, that's just leaving you in no man's land. You have to hit a winner there virtually if you go across. Well, better off just staying on the baseline. He would have got his racket on the next ball from there. When you play these heavy hitters, you know, the, the Nadals and the Advantage. Alcaraz, Alcaraz. And the, the guys that really hit the ball with heavy spin and bounce, quite often players find themselves defending more than they usually do. And that's a natural occurrence because the speed and bounce coming at you pins you at the baseline. It's looking at tennis through different eyes when you play someone like that. Youth. You know, they, the great players, their coaches tell them to have a diverse game. They don't encourage this lad to stay back all the time. They've, they've taught him how to have an all-court game. Juan Carlos Ferrero, the coach. One Carlos not here. He's had knee surgery, so he's probably tuning into Advantage. this stream to watch his charge in action. Any advice for him, Fitzy? What he what he should do? Uh, one Carlos. I can't give Juan Carlos any advice. He was number one in the world, David. What a player he was. French Open champion. If he's listening now, I hope he's well. Oh. We send our regards. Hope the knees on the improve. So Demonor gets the break back, squares it up at one apiece. One game. Leighton Hewitt in the box, Australia's Davis Cup captain and was the United Cup captain as well, a mentor for Alex Demonor. We're going to have a chat to Leighton a little bit later. Main coach Rodolfo Gutierrez. Thank you. Fifteen left. Yeah. <laughs> 
Fortilla. This stadium is almost full, which is wonderful. Shows the growing stature of Alex Dimonor, but also I think the popularity of Alcaraz as well. And the game. Yep. Opening week has been yeah. a success already, I think. People are coming. Yeah, yeah Dimonor. So, a good service hold for Alex Dimonor, who can head to the chair, leading 2 1 in this opening set. Two games to one. Five in the stadium too. Talked about the opening week and crowds coming in for the qualifiers. We've seen two good days after a lot of rain on the first day that saw no play, but uh, the full venue in operation. So with this opening week match, we get great access. We're going to have a talk to the players during the match tonight, and Carlos is uh, is first up. Um, a, a long question, or a, a big question, but two years we haven't seen you, so what in particular has improved about your game in those two years? Well, uh, I think I grew up, you know, uh, as a person physically as well, uh, and I uh, understood, you know, uh, how I can, you know, beat the those guys or what I have to do, you know, and uh, believe in my, in my game. I think that's the, the, the best improvement that I, I did, you know, in, in these two, two years, just to uh, pull my, my own game and uh, forget about uh, everything, everything else. Well, it's worked with those two Grand Slam titles. Let's get up and walk because uh, chair umpire might um, get us in trouble shortly. A quick one on Alex and dealing with what Alex brings on the other side of the court. What, what are the keys when you, because you had that great match at Queen's last year? Well, honestly, you have to play your, your best, you know, against him. I mean, he's uh, so fast. He reads uh, almost every ball, so you have to uh, put your, your, your best game, you know, your best thoughts against him. Uh, you know, um, as, as you say, I think I, I just played just once against him. It was a tough match and, uh, you know, uh, I think I, I played really, really well that match and uh, hopefully this, uh, this one as well. Well, your serve. Yeah. I'll get out of the way. Good luck. Crazy, really, when you think last time he was here, he was 18 and he was outside the top 30 in the world. There's a lot that can change in a short period of time. Two grand slams. Yeah. Characteristic. Caught the line. Love 15. He's right on top of it. Just dropped in. What's the key to his generation of power? Because he, he doesn't have a huge swing. Yeah, you know. Well, he's obviously got amazing timing, I think, to generate that. But, you know, David, the rackets and the string, by the way, have changed the game immeasurably, really. That They're just like rockets now, these rackets. Let's That's true, but everyone's service. got the capability to use the same racket That's that true. he's using That's with the same true. strings and the same setup. Yep. That's true. I think it's timing. 
He's obviously got a lot of strength in that frame of his too. And you know, you also need a quick hand, a quick, a fast arm. You know, is the parlance 30, really? 15. People refer to someone having a fast arm. You know, so they can slingshot their serve or or whip their forehand through. So you need all of those things to come together and learn the right technique as a young player. But he's such a special talent. Oh. And I think at the end of the day, the, these great players, they, they just know how to hit the right shot at the right time and they're good enough to do it. Pretty simple, really. For some. from El Caraz, two all. And that capacity yeah, fits in this game for the players. There's the hotshot kids and uh, great goal. initiative this week in the opening week. 6,000 rackets they're giving away for kids that come here with their parents and enjoy the opening week. Well, it's about Most of them enjoying a sandwich is what you do at that age. Yeah. I'm hungry. But it's, it's about increasing numbers of kids playing this great game too. It, it's so big. Get a racket in the hand. Let them have fun. They get a smile on their face the first time they use it. They come back. Well, it didn't go in, but Fitzy, I'm sure as a, one of the great serve volleyers, you would love the fact that Alcaraz doesn't mind coming in as well. Yeah, That's look, probably why he's been so successful at Wimbledon on the grass. Look, David, I'm, I'm loathe to criticise you, but be careful what adjectives you use. Okay, please, well, I, I serve and volley <laughs> then. I'll remove the great. <laughs> yeah, remove that. Yeah, no, I like, I like seeing him come forward. He's missed a couple of volleys here, but he's just developing his game. He's, he's just learning. And he's so good already, but he's, he's learning more dimensions to his game. That can only stand him in good stead. So just to expand slightly on the point that we, before I saw the hotshot kids about the 15 or when, one player at each end, the capacity to think your way through without the coach, without the analytics in front of you, to make the right call at the right time. You know, they've got coaching staff everywhere and we see them when they're out in practice. There's people everywhere. But when it comes to game time, there's two people out in the court. Yeah. And that capacity to make the right decision at the right time. Yep. Is it learned or is it just innate? Or a combination? Oh, I think probably both. I mean, but a lot of it is an eight, I think. I mean, I mean who told Mats Villander and uh, Horace Becker how to win majors at 17? You know, that, that's an innate ability. You know, they get great coaching early. They become good players, really good players early in the juniors. And then they just have something special to be able to do that. This lad's the same. I've just got a text from one Carlos. He disagrees with you. It's all about the coaching. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may be in his case. <laughs> Gee, that was a uh, not some not a shot he'd be proud of, probably. Forget that one. 40-15. Maybe a change of mind there halfway through.
Well, it's a good chase and good hustle from both players. The variety is enjoyable. Well, I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know, David, but he is quick. <laughs> well, both of them are. <laughs> I didn't know he was a hot dog, though. That's a, that's a dangerous shot. So Demon will hold serve. 3 2 in this opening set. Demon leads by three games to two. We were discussing this with Jim Courier in Perth at the United Cup. Flat line speed from A to B over 30 metres. Who's the fastest in the game? And Demon thought was up there. He had Alcaraz definitely in the mix. There's a difference, of course, but going side to side and stop start and zigzag and. But these two amongst the fastest in the game. You can see it's the capacity to change direction and get going. It's impressive. Yeah. And look, with respect, there's not a lot of future for a player who's not quick. They don't have to be this quick, probably, because these are the top end of the spectrum. But, but you need to be fast to play this game on a, at the top level. Opening week here at the Australian Open of 2024. Match for charity, the Australian Tennis Foundation. Raising funds to get tennis rackets and other things in the hands of children for a brighter future. And we've got the world number two, Carlos Alcaraz, the reigning Wimbledon champion, up against you know, one of the hottest men in tennis at the moment, Alex Dimonor. Stella. United Cup into the top 10. And after an exchange of service breaks in the opening two games, we're on serve. There's room on that racket bag for a few more stars too. You know, the other benefit, David, about coming forward a lot is that it, short, it can shorten points and matches. And, and, you know, there are some older players still going around that by the time they get to the third round these days, they're struggling a bit because, because of the effort and the hours they spend on the court. I, I like the fact that a young player is learning his craft moving forward. It can only be beneficial in, on a number of levels. That sounds like, as you know, yeah, Fitzy, my background in athletics, that sounds like the Kenyan marathon theory. Why, why run for two hours and ten minutes when you can only run for two hours and one? <laughs> <laughs> they like to get it over and done with very quickly. And same, same thing applies. I have no answer for that. Three kilometres an hour, that serve. It generates... They're both six foot exactly, 183, which I always have a bit of a question mark when I see Sid... It's like AFL football here. You're five foot 11 and three quarters, you're six foot. Ah. 
it's interesting that both these players are only six foot two, if they are 183. I mean, that, that, that's probably shorter than the majority these yep. days. The, the, the natural trend has been over the last decade or two to a longer limbed, taller athlete in this game. And I would dare say in a lot of sports. Mm. He gets a good pop on his serve, though, doesn't he? He uses his legs really well to yeah. extend and get up in the air. Yeah, that's one of the surprise things about him, I think. It's interesting, though. Yes. Demon or came back from two love. He's up three two forty or and we haven't really noticed him a lot yet tonight. I, I haven't. I've been sort of watching for the explosiveness of Alcaraz a lot. Demon's just going about his business. He's playing at this level without causing too much fuss. That's a good sign. He enjoyed that too. <laughs> He's a good character, isn't he? Advantage, Alcaraz. Well, we heard in that interview with Adam Peacock before the start of the match. You know, he's relaxed, he's engaging. People like him. Oh, yeah. It's not his first language and he's entertaining. He's got a great persona. Look at that. It's great. Advantage, Alcaraz. Good indication there of how Alcaraz turns defense into attack so quickly. Just with one hit, actually. Pretty good return of serve there from Alex Dimonor. And uh, it was back so fast into his backhand corner, he didn't have time to recover. Well, there's a good example of that power that Alcaraz is able to produce from the back of the court. Three all. Just touching on that, you know, the, the likability. I'm a bit addicted to the talent shows, like, you know, Britain's Got it's Talent, cool, yeah. America's Got Talent, etc. And I love Simon Cow when he says, when he analyses someone, he says, people like you, I like you. And that's, I think you're, right. you, people are going to be cheering for you. And Alcaraz. Well, we like him. Well, he, obviously an Australian audience here, people like Alex Demonor, but that's important, I think, for a particularly young player as he's yeah. coming through. The, he'll have he'll have people cheering for him. 
And importantly, I think he doesn't polarise people. You know, there's a lot of people around in our that. industries that, that polarise. And I think it's really healthy not to polarise people against it. And everyone is very happy when a personality like this does well. Oh. I found someone the other day that didn't like Roger Federer. I couldn't believe it. What? I could not believe it. They're out there, well, apparently. Yeah, hard to play something. No, I'm in, I'm in shock. <laughs> How's that possible? I don't know. Oh, now know? I've got Roger Federer texting me. Who? <laughs> Who is that person? Uh, I'm not sure he needs to worry. <laughs> These service games will bolster Demonor's mood. Not that it yeah, needs bolstering, but impressive. Demonor leads 4-3. Demonor leads by four games to three. I was watching a great documentary on the Australian Open on local TV here. Fitzy and uh, Roger played that epic final here against Rafa and... I just think, when's he going to come back? And it's a long way to come just to wave to the crowd, etc. But it'd be nice to see him back just to he's, he's waved not to have few, to play. He's waved to a few crowds yeah, in his time. He has. He's probably on the slopes. Yeah. It's a long way to come to have a victory tour. But uh, I doubt he skied much. I, I, I actually don't know, but while he played. You wouldn't need to take that risk, would you? No. But I bet, he, I bet he's skiing now, you would think. And uh, that cheer is for you, mate. Uh, Alex Demonor on court right now. Um, yeah, great quality that we're seeing so far. I'll ask the same question I asked Carlos about you. What about facing this fella? What's it like? Well, he's pretty good, isn't he? Uh, nah, he's, uh, he's done amazing things for the sport at such a young age. I've basically grown up with him. I've watched him play. I've watched him grow up. And, and look, he's uh, pretty darn good. Yeah, he's pretty good. You're pretty good too, mate. Last one before you serve here or, or face. Um, up there, we've got 50 hotshot kids uh, up there. Give us a wave, kids. And they've all bought a sign as well. They're your crew, are they? You're a hotshot ambassador now, so it's great to have all support everywhere, especially those kids. Yeah, it's great to see them in the crowds. Hopefully they can cheer nice and loud so I can hear you. And uh, let's see if we can get a break now. Here we go. Alex, he's laughing, Carlos. Facing Carlos Alcaraz again. That's got the kids off their seats. You know, he's playing some he's playing some Love shots in this last week and a half that we've seen that are rather impressive, Dave. I mean that that's skill. Lots of it. Well, it was the combination, the low one to the toes and then the capacity to hit the drop shot afterwards. After no, Alcaraz said, well, that was good, but I can return that because I'm that good. It's, we do need to take a moment to appreciate the quality of what we're seeing.
Every now and again, there's just a little element of surprise, isn't it, from Alcaraz? Like that serve just went out a little bit wider than you thought. 15, came a little 15. bit quicker. Just there, he had to reach just at the last second. Thought he had it covered. They produce it when it matters. Love 30. 30. He hit that extra special serve you were referring to. And then he's he's got the ability to do this. Perfect accuracy and feel. See him change the grip there just before impact. And again, the power. So the diversity of... The bag of tricks of Alcaraz. Using variety, he, he's a—he's not a what we call a one-trick pony. He's got lots of weapons in his bag. Great change up there. Use that first serve wisely. Something different, giving the opponent something else to look at. So you keep them guessing. He's doing that. Of course, we're here for the Australian Tennis Foundation. Proceeds from the charity matches help to support a brighter future for kids through tennis. And you can find out more at that website. Okay, Fitzy, so you like to you know that I like to make you know, silly prognostications and use my extreme depth of being able to see the future. I reckon at four all, this is one of those, and three four, you can add the previous game where Alcaraz, this is what we talked about at the start. He's just going to say, okay, here we go. Get really serious here. You're not just a pretty face, are you? Well, let's see what happens, but. And for Alex, he knows it's coming. Yeah, well. No one knows the future, do they? But, um, Nostradamus thought he had a fair idea. Thirty-fifteen. I think it just shows the form that Alex is in. He's he just believes in himself. He's this is sort of subconscious this level at the moment for him. Oh. Back from Love Fifteen, we thought Carlos might make his move here. You just get confidence is an amazing 40, thing, isn't 50, it? 50, 50. And, and Alex is confident early in the season. The big thing for him now, to me, is just that he needs to be fresh. And hopefully, if he can get to the second week and give it a shake, you know, not expend too much energy in, in long matches in the first week. Playing well. So Demonor holds serve, leads 5 4 in this opening set. Jimeno leads by five games to four. You know, again, I heard Jim talking about this the other day, the, the pressure of a home slam and etc. and what should he do. And his advice, turn your phone off, that's the first thing you do. You don't uh, 
turn the TV on and watch much. You don't, you know, back in the day you read the newspapers, but you get off the social media, do all of that. And um, for Alex, if he's a chance, a phone call to Ash Barty probably wouldn't be a bad idea as well. Just to say, what, what do you reckon, Ash? I got it, I got it, I got it. Well, the one, one thing for sure is just keep it simple. Yeah. Don't comp overcomplicate things. Probably stay away from the courts a lot because there's so much happening. Takes your attention away, puts your mind on other things. Just keep it simple. And young kids too are attracted to Alex Demon, or it helps when you've got a nickname like the Demon, that'll get the kids in. It's amazing the TikTok generation and how young just as teenagers consume their, their sport. We've got two boys, Fitzy, in their late teens, early 20s, and they know everything that's going on during the tennis and will hardly watch a match. But they get all of their news from TikTok. They'd know all about Carlos Alcaraz. They know all about the demon. Totally across it, just from watching clips on TikTok. Any chance we can get those two good athletes of yours into tennis? Are you on TikTok? No. I follow the kiss method, the keep it simple right. method. Here we go. Yeah. So my uh, Nostradamus Love prediction baby. may not be coming true. Interesting that first serve percentage of Demon or 54% against Djokovic. He almost made it through the entire match without losing a point when his first serve went in. But he'd like to have a higher first serve percentage than 54%. that backhand down the line can hurt an opponent there's not a lot of margin on that one from Alex he, he almost hits it with a bit of underspin sometimes and Love it's a very watching. flat trajectory but his accuracy is uncanny set points times three Demonor continues his excellent form, takes this opening set to the applause of a pretty full stadium here at Rod Laver Arena. 6-4. Six, six, Breaks the serve. 
missed his opening service game and then broke back immediately. An enjoyable first set, yeah, John Fitzgerald. Very, some good stuff both from both of them. Really entertaining, by the way. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world for either of these players not to win this, but it does make you feel a little better when you step back off the court in the locker room and you think, hmm, yeah, I feel a bit more like a winner, even if it is not an official match. Hope you're enjoying the action before Carlos Alcaraz and Alex Dimonor came out onto Rod Laver Arena. Novak Djokovic and his team were practicing. No signs of the wrist complaint that troubled him in Perth, the United Cup. He looks relaxed. Probably could add a few more people to the posse there, I think. John looks a little bit light on yeah, a bit light in terms on. of the number yeah. of people that are travelling with him. That was, that was the members of the team that were travelling up the front of the plane. Right, there's other people. Oh, I, yeah. But how good a sign is that when someone's laughing and having Second fun seven. and enjoying? Alex That's what it's about. It makes you play better. Yeah. No doubt. But, but, best player in the world, he's, he's relaxed. Does a lot of winning. He knows how to do it. Helps. Enjoyment. Oh. So I hope you're enjoying this action from Melbourne Park, Rod Laver Arena, opening week at the Australian Open. And this charity match kick things off. Going no back and friends tomorrow night. Alcaraz, Alcaraz and Casper Ruud on Friday. And we start on Sunday for the first time. Oh. A little on the quickish side to me, just watching. And you know who that suits? This man, I think. He, he, he likes the ball coming onto the racket. He can use the speed of the opposition's ball a little bit that way. Seen in Perth was the absolute punishment that Demonor puts his shoes through. He moves through a couple of shoelaces as he breaks on that back foot and drags the shoe along the ground and the friction just snaps the shoelaces. The capacity to slide on this surface is amazing. They redo the courts every year, don't they? So it always fascinates me how they can play a little faster. And obviously yeah. indoors here, the roof's not open that much. The sun doesn't see that much sun until we get to this time of the year. Yeah. A bit like a handmade car. There, there, there might be nuances of slight differences. Which could affect, you know, the speed of the court slightly. So they may not be exactly the same. Not, they'll be certainly super close, but could be some slight variation around the around the grounds. Oh.
Well, the flat trajectory of Demonor is advantageous a lot of the time. If he if he hits the ball in, it's usually deep. You know, I can't help thinking of Jimmy Connors a little bit in the old days where he hit the ball so flat and quite often the ball was deep. You almost felt like you were half following the ball. Really a, really a disadvantage down the other end, I think. So even that was a deep yeah, ball. Saves the break point. Opens up the account. First game, second well, set. Thrilled to be joined by Leighton Hewitt, who's joining us from the courtside players box. And Leighton, great to be talking to you, David Cobbett, alongside John Fitzgerald. And, um, well, firstly, you must be a little sad that uh, the Demons taken your top ten. You, July <laughs> 2006. That's a <laughs> no, long time ago, Leighton. No, it was due. It was due. We were all waiting for that to happen. So, uh, no, it's fantastic. It was obviously a massive goal of his as well to get to the top ten, but extra special as well for him to do it last week in Sydney on the back of some of those wins that he had in the United Cup. Uh, he's playing the best tennis of his career. Um, he's put in a lot of hard work in the off-season. He only finished late as well. Um, and he got us through to the Davis Cup Thank final you. where we were awfully close in Malaga yet again. So, um, yeah, he hadn't had a, a big turnaround, time off, um, but he's put in some hard work and it's really paying off so far uh, to start this new year. Leighton, what's he looking to get out of this match tonight? It's more comfortable with the conditions out here, playing on Rod Laver Arena. Love, played a few matches the last couple of years out here, but not a whole heap, really. And, uh, you know, to be up against one of the very best players as well, just getting a feel for the conditions. They've been slightly different. He started the United Cup over in Perth, which was different conditions to going to Sydney then as well. So just a really good hit out. And, you know, watching these boys both up close, geez, they move well. Uh, the movement's quite incredible by both players and you know, really just fine-tuning a couple of things before starting on Sunday. Well, that's a compliment, Rusty. <laughs> Telling someone else they're moving fast. <laughs> Get some pretty good wheels. Does, yeah, 20 did, years ago, mate. <laughs> does, the, does the court feel a bit faster this year? Yeah, I think at times, especially the new balls, they shoot through the court for sure. And, you know, I thought Perth was actually quite lively out there for the United Cup. Sydney, because of the closed environment, it was more a dead feel uh, on that particular centre court. And it's probably a little bit quicker than Sydney here at the moment. But that's kind of what he's getting to feel out here tonight, really. You know, you'd imagine he's going to play quite a few matches, hopefully, if he can go deep in this tournament on this particular court and this surface. Oh. And I still think this court will quicken up as well. There wasn't that much hitting before we first got here on Rod Laver Arena. The more the players get out there and hit, it will actually get quicker. Well, excellent tennis on both ends. Gee, he's confident, Rusty. Um, I would have thought that he would like the conditions a fraction quicker, Alex. It suits his style, I would have thought, because the ball will come onto the racket a bit more and it allows him to use the speed of the opposition a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it helps his movement as well. He's so quick that you can see transitioning into the net there. And, um, you yeah, know, he's done a lot of work uh, on his net game. He feels quite comfortable up there as well. So uh, I think that's one reason he's been playing extremely well in the United Cup was he was willing to look to get forward, put pressure on his opponents, play with a bit more variety. But also, he's got such good hands out there as well, so the quicker court doesn't worry him too much, especially on the return to serve. Wow, well, great speed from the Demon, who hunts it down like a predator and gets the break point. And I saw Alcaraz then uh, just look back over his shoulder. That that burst of speed surprised him a little bit, I think, right, uh, Leighton? 30. Yeah, absolutely. It didn't surprise me. I knew he hadn't <laughs> covered here. Kind of did the no look as well, flicking it, crossing past. 
You haven't taught him to be a hot dog, have you? Look one way and hit it the other. So impressive from Alex Dimonor. Breaks and leaves two love. Uh, Leighton, you've got to be pretty good to win a US Dimonor Open leads. in Wimbledon. Um, Carlos Elcaraz. Two games to love. Not bad. No, no, he's very special. <laughs> and he's going to be around for an awfully long time as well. But um, you know, I don't think many people would have given him much chance of winning Wimbledon this particular you know, last Wimbledon when he went into it. And I watched him throughout that Queen's tournament a couple of weeks out. And, he was a little scratchy on the grass starting the Queen's Tournament. By the end of it, he was so confident, and he just continues to back himself out there. And he looks to get forward. He looks to take the game on, and uh, it was impressive what he did. And, and to beat the very best in a Wimbledon final was, uh, at such a young age, something pretty special. Thanks for your time. It's great to hear you from the sidelines. Love your analysis, and enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks, boys. Leighton won the US Open, won Wimbledon, came close here. I reckon he'd like what he sees in Carlos Alcaraz. Yeah, a final here as well. Another final at the US Open. I think the quarters was as far as he got at the French. Heavier conditions there were tough. He also loved the ball coming onto the racket. He loved the fight too, he loved the battle. So he'd like Alcaraz for all of those things because he uh, has got a lot of Love those characteristics, 30. as does Demonor. And it's an enjoyable encounter at the moment. And Alcaraz is experiencing what Taylor Fritz, Alex Verev and Novak Djokovic has gone through in the last 10 days. Fifteen thirty. Thirty. Forty thirty. Game Dimino. Interesting. Out to a three love lead here. Alex Demonor, impressive. Demonor leads by three games to left. A few more loose shots from Carlos Alcaraz. We take a look at the serve of Alex Demonor. Punishment that he puts those shoes under. Can't say he doesn't put his weight into the ball, can you? And his heart as well. There's, there's a lot going on. Interesting the all-court game from both of them. You know, both of them, obviously, Alcaraz, a Spaniard. But Dimonor played a lot of his junior tennis, grew up in Spain, and they've developed this all-court game. And 
it's credit to their coaches, really, that mm. said if you want to be a good tennis player, you need to be able to do things on all sorts of surfaces. Here with uh, Carlos Alcaraz. Now, mate, I couldn't help but notice there was a gentleman over there late in the first set who said something about Atletico Madrid playing Real Madrid tomorrow in a Spanish Super Cup semi-final and said that Atletico are going to win and you're a Real Madrid fan and you haven't won a game since. <laughs> so is this how opposition players can get into your head now? Just sledge you about Real Madrid? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's a pretty good match, you know, all the Spanish people yeah, are going to follow that. Uh, you say, I mean, just Real Madrid fan, and, uh, you know, since he talked about that, I'm thinking about it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, but uh, uh, it's probably kind of thing that going through through your mind. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Carlos, let you get back out there and get back into this one. Alex is playing pretty well. Carlos Alcaraz out there, everyone. 50, we're talking during the sit-down about the all-court game of both players and their full credit to their coaches growing up, Demon or in Spain, obviously Alcaraz. That's where he's from, but they've got this game that's for all surfaces. Yeah, yeah. I think young players should take note. Does it happen enough? Young players rising through the ranks? I think the good players do it, and they they learn an all-court game. I, I must admit, in this country, I don't think our young players spend enough time there. You know, because if you're going to have an all-court game, you need to be able to finish points at the net. And if you do all the work from the back and you don't miss a ball back there, but you can't finish it at the net, it takes away a dimension, or two, actually. So... I would recommend it. I think I think our young players should spend more time up there. Quite often you go to junior tournaments and kids are hitting balls from the back of the court. One, two, three, four, twenty balls from the back. They go up to the net and they spend thirty seconds there and they're off. And when they play a match, it comes back to haunt them sometimes. So these guys I really appreciate their all court talent. It's it's awesome. that one Alex but have you noticed also you know sometimes when the camera 30, lingers 50. on Alex after he's played a point he's just got this air of confidence now it, it, I, I'm sure I'm not imagining it I'm, I'm sure he's got it he's he's in winning form he's hit form early this season and he just I think he's starting to believe that he should be there with all of these guys why not been interesting his commentary and his own words after matches Third that field. people didn't believe and this is for the you know those that didn't believe I'm, I'm not sure who they are or where they are those people to be honest but there's there's clearly in Alex's mind people that didn't think he could be at this level I, I, I find it hard to believe it would be tennis people because I think I think everyone in this country believes in him they're not we're not no one's sure how far he can go but that's the journey and he's on a good one. And Breaks he's points 30, again here. 40. Perhaps it's just that thing that he doesn't have a big weapon. Doesn't have the weapon. Well, his weapon's his all-court capacity. But the, that's a big weapon. Must be social media people he's referring. I don't know. But uh, I think there's a lot of belief in him in the tennis fraternity. That's for sure. He took a step back and then still made it there. And it was a good shot from Alcaraz. Now, I agree that the, the demeanour of Demonor is... Yes. Got that belief. Wash away a point and move on to the next one pretty quickly.
He's going to need that next week, Fitzy, and the week after, and there'll be moments in the first week where uh, you're under a bit of duress and no one sails Jim through. No. Or it's rare that you just sail through without any uh, perspiration in the first week, but in the second week there's, there's some depth in the men's game that can do some damage. Well, to win a Grand Slam, there's so many variables, Dave. You know, that there's the heat here in Australia. You don't know when that's coming. You don't, you don't know when rain's coming and when you have to go indoors if you're on one of the major courts. You know, three stadiums here that can close the roof. By the way, that's fairly incredible. Yeah. A lot of variables. Oh. Exchanges at the net. As I'm sure tennis fans are everywhere. Uh, advantage, Alcaraz. Carlos gets on the board in the second set. Timonor leads 3-1. Timonor leads by three games to one. Fifteen left. Ball. Thirty left. Thirty fifteen. The, the serve of Demon Oil, it's it hasn't got necessarily heavier, but it just seems to be a little more effective. Is that yeah, fair thing to say about yeah. what we've seen so far this year? I think so. He's he's not afraid to just every time he steps up to go after the first one, he's getting enough free points and setting up some you know, some good first shots with the with the first serve. Game getting Demon the odd base. 203. So it's been impressive. 4 1, second set. Demonor leads by four games 
to one. balance from Alex Demonor, great work from our camera crew. So far this has been an impressive display from the Australian. Enjoying a career high in terms of ranking and his performance on the court as well. And we're going to hear from Alex Demonor in just a moment with Adam Peacock. And uh, Alex is just adjusting his shoes. All okay with the shoes tonight, by the way? Haven't blown a uh, tyre again? No, all good, all good. <laughs> yeah, good. Hey, uh, everything else is going well. Why are you playing so well? Oh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's pretty good to be here in Melbourne uh, playing on RLA. It's a pretty special event, a great charity, so I'm enjoying myself. What do you think about when you're trying to close a match out against the top, top player? I try not to think about closing the match and just keep on playing. So, thanks for that. I'll let you keep going then. Good luck. No, that was a good answer. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it until just now. What? Hang on. We're almost at the finish line. Thanks very much, Adam. Yes, thank you. I think Carlos would like to improve the score line a fraction. Oh. Fifteen left. I think he'd be better for this hit out. Alcaraz, he's, he's missing a few balls that you probably won't see him miss when the tournament proper starts. Just overplaying that forehand a little bit, missing a few lines. Give him a few days, I would think. That's the purpose of this, isn't it? He, he played that 15, exhibition 30. event against Novak in the Middle East before Novak arrived in Perth, the United Cup, but Alcaraz didn't play for Team Spain. So he'll enjoy this and Friday night against Casper Ruud. form something that's fickle and you don't want to play with it but you do need to time your run in a grand slam you, you don't want to be at the absolute peak of your powers in the opening days no not easy to manage that though not the opening week either yeah. if you can if you i don't know how you do that to if, be honest but. well if you're one of the great players you can you can possibly win some of your matches in fifth gear rather than sixth gear i guess if you have six gears to go to and, and not be taxed too much physically by those early matches. If you have a couple of five setters back to back, one of them on a hot day in the first week, it can set you back a little bit. Oh, just missed it. And emotionally, too, you can drain the battery, can't you, in those encounters? Forty, thirty. 
lucky. I thought off the racket this was going to yeah. land in. Looked a little closer than the close call showed. Let's for service. This one clips the line. Gee, that's that's strong. You got to hook that ball, backing up like that, and hook it down the line. Your body momentum's going one way, and you you can generate enough pace in the opposite direction here, backing away and then hitting with forward speed. There, that's that's good timing. And gets the round of applause from his opponent. Their balance, it's like Barishnikov just twirling around on the toes. So Adam Peacock asked Alex the question about the finishing, and uh, thank you. Service hold here will help for Alex Demonor. Little test. You know, he's an accomplished volleyer now, it, it, and I'm sure 15 all level. of his coaching staff, including Adolfo and Leighton and, of course, Tony Roach, he used to put Pat Rafter through his paces on, on the volleys all those years ago. He's just competent now when he comes in. He, you, you just believe he's going to make it. Oh. 15 off. That, but the fast feet from Demon Oil is just impressive. His, his ability to get back into position. Bang, bang, bang. So fast. Pistons. 15, yeah. And even 30. for the big hitters like Alcaraz, it's hard to put the ball away against him. He covers more court, by the way. Alcaraz there was dominating, standing, covering very little territory and making Demon Oil move. But he's, he's so quick that he can do it and he's hard to beat. Hard to put the ball away. That said, though, Alcaraz got the break points. And I think Adam Peacock's got something 15, to answer for. Wow. You know, he, yeah. he brought it up. He yeah. put it in his mind. Yeah. No, there, there's, <laughs> uh, there's a big question. <laughs> Let's for service. That was a wild swing. We haven't seen too many of those from Alcaraz. 30, 40. Oh.
Sirokarev. Sirokarev gets the break. Dimino leads 4-3 in his second set. Dimino leads by four games to three. Serve here and uh, scoreline more respectable. We're back on serve, more to go too. If we do have a set of piece, we'll have a match tiebreaker 10 points to determine an end result. He needs his racket, but no harm in asking. So an hour and 22 of entertaining tennis here at Rod Laver Arena is opening week at the Australian Open of 2024. Celebrates the first of our charity matches for the Australian Tennis Foundation. With number two, Carlos Alcaraz up against... World number 10, Alex Dimonor. Dimonor took the first set 6-4. Raced out to a three love lead in this second set. And Kraz has fought back. Back on serve as Alcaraz will serve. Trailing 3-4. Love 15. personally don't like approaching Fifth a cross court Dino. like that and coming in for Alcaraz. But who am I to tell him, really? He hits his forehand so hard. But Dem you won't see Demon or do that, do that anywhere near as much. It's, it's fraught with a bit of danger because you get to give a guy a running forehand, he can hurt you a bit more than Alex ended up doing there. Gets away with it, Alcaraz. That's big. Wow. That had some forward speed on it. That was that racket head speed is enormous. He certainly 30, doesn't look muscle 15. bound, does he? But this power is incredible. In slow motion, that, that racket head speed is second to none. Core strength of Alcaraz is impressive. You know, those shots where he's he's backing backwards, but here he sets himself. It's a lot of that comes from what he's got around the abdominals and his hips. Oh. So fight back from Carlos Alcaraz. Ties it up at four apiece. 
The man responsible for the uh, little slump from Alex Demonor is Adam Peacock Four courtside. And Adam, is, uh, you did your best to put Carlos Alcaraz off and then um, he's responded. And then you just reminded Alex that he was close to serving out the match. Hang on, hang on. Rely on some facts here, Colbert. So, firstly, that it was the guy from the crowd about Alcaraz, but I think I did annoy Carlos saying, oh, good luck serving out the match to <laughs> Alex, because after that, and, and Fitz is right, the, the velocity off the racket from Alcaraz when he's got the opportunity is just remarkable, absolutely remarkable. So, I uh, look forward to seeing it over the next two and a half weeks. But, yeah, Fitz will probably blame me as well, but Fitz, does that all the time. When things went wrong with the Davis Fitzy Cup, then you just blame Wally. So... <laughs> Uh, it, isn't it nice sitting, or isn't it extraordinary sitting at, at court level, Adam? I mean, the, the speed really gets your attention, doesn't it? Yeah, not just off the racket, but the change in direction, the anticipation of the change in direction. It, it, you kind of lose it a little on, on TV, and anyone coming to the Australian Open this year, just, just have a look at these players once they hit the ball. Don't follow the ball, watch the player and what they do it's, it's amazing how they do it and they do it for five hours sometimes it's, it's uh, mind blowing Fifteen thirty. For service. Oh, that's as good as you'll see. Now, the timing to do that is top of the tree. He changes the direction here. His body weight's almost going backwards, so to control and understand where his racket face is there and then generate that power, uh, it's about as good as you'll ever see. I bet Adam Peacock was impressed with that. Thirty forty. Tried to do the same off the forehand wing. Juice. Must be good to be young and precocious. Fearless too. He's not happy now, though. He's yeah. disappointed he didn't break there. Carlos? We had the two break points. Demonor's done uh, well. Advantage. We'd love to Demino. squeeze his way out of this tight spot.
Well, that backhand yeah, slice is work. a shot that he's improved out of sight. Using it beautifully down the line to open the quarter. Dimino leads 5-4. Dimino leads by five games to four. So that point then, John, was a demonstration, I think, of a difference in Demonor's game. We saw it a lot in the United Cup, and Jim, I'm not using my expertise here, I'm just going to parrot what Jim said, that change of pace a couple of times, and then the fast acceleration. Yeah. It's, it's a little different, and it's often, this is, you know, Jim suggesting against not what they're expecting to see. They're expecting to see the continued pace oh, rather yeah, than a bit of a... Yeah. I think what are your thoughts? Well, I think his change of pace is a little different to an Alvarez change of pace, where Carlos hits the ball hard, and his change of pace is just to smash it. You know, he, he, he's just a heavy hitter most of the time. He can slice, and he comes in. We've seen that. So he's got great variety. But Demon changes the pace with the slice a lot more. Gets it deep, takes the speed off, and then generates. We're here for the Australian Tennis Foundation, helping Australian tennis youngsters have a brighter future. You can donate at the website there, ozopen.com forward slash ATF, or use that QR code, and that goes to help young kids around Australia in a whole range of different ways. You can do that through the Australian Tennis Foundation. That is why we're here, huge support and beneficiary of this evening. So Alcaraz serving to stay in this. An hour and 33 minutes of wonderful tennis. Beautiful night in Melbourne. Fifteen left. Extraordinary tennis. I mean, he is in fine form, is Alex Dimonor. I'm not sure if that last ball was in. No, it was, <laughs> it was out. out. Have a look at some of the shots here. 15 up. This one, the extreme angle. Alcaraz takes a jump at it. He leaps at it and plays a cracker. How was that shot? Oh, Marvellous stuff. No wonder uh, Alcaraz was having a bit of a question. Looked like a double hit from Demonor, but the ball was out. Some of the shot making here is just a it's it's a little taster, isn't 30, it? It's an entree. 15. Maybe not even an hors d'oeuvre. It's an expensive entree. Well, twenty dollars for the fans here, they've got their value for money. <laughs> Very good value. Oh, interesting. We well, stuck that forehand volley too. A lot of good volleys around the world would be happy with that. 40 15. It was an afterthought, the volley. He served, saw that it was so good. There he was. He sort of propped, stopped, and then went forward when he saw the serve was so good. points in so many different 40, ways now 50. you know attack a guy's second serve if and then the next time Alcaraz or whoever he's playing has a second serve he'll be worried about fading it into that forehand 
good stuff. I dare say he'll find his mark with that as the week goes on. In this particular uh, match tonight, it's cost uh, Carlos a, a little bit, hooking that forehand inside in there just a bit wide a couple of times. He'll find his mark as the tournament goes on, but this man is in rare form. I think half the crowd are cheering for Demonor to take the scalp, and the rest of them want the Thank entertainment you. to continue. Thank you. It's a bit like that. Match point. Juice. thinking the great players do a beautiful body serve here deliberate advantage into the Alcaraz. left hip of Demonor and opening the court up because he was leaning that way He hits it hard, and then he hits it harder. Yeah, no, correct. Carlos saves a match point. Ties it up at five apiece. I wonder what Adam Peacock's thinking right now, sitting down there and seeing the power, the, the velocity of that ball comes off the strings. It's quite extraordinary. Fitzy, I've got a sore neck after that last point. <laughs> I, I saw it to uh, Rod Laver Arena, please. And there's a ball down here without any air in it anymore. <laughs> that was one big forehand, wasn't it? That last one. Oh. Uh, but Fitzy, just on the, the, the change in pace. You, you can Love absolutely 15. notice it down here, and you can hear it too, because he doesn't make a sound when he's off pace and playing slices and whatever. 
and then all of a sudden, it's the power shot, and the whole suburb knows about it. Love, 30. Interesting little change here with Dumanor having the match point and Kras getting out of that Love now three 14. break points immediately. Well, it's the type of stuff and reversals we see from Alcaraz in in the main draws of these majors. He can turn matches on their head very quickly. That's the reaction from the crowd. Just caught the line. Looked a little safer than that on first inspection. Game so Alcaraz break. gets the break and now leads 6-5. He's going to serve for the set. Alcaraz leads by six games to five. an impressive fight back from Carlos Alcaraz. Five minutes we've been in operation here on Rod Laver Arena and we've enjoyed every single one of those as this match looks like potentially off to a 10-point match tiebreaker with Thomas Alcaraz staving off the match point breaking the demon or serve time and now will serve to extend this into a third which I think he'd like just to balance the ledger here Certainly at 4-1, he wouldn't have been satisfied with the scoreline. And as the champs do, he has responded. Fifteen love. Oh! 
Let's second seven. in across court it's interesting for me I, I think he can do it because his forehand is so big it's so heavy that the player down the other end can't get enough purchase on a shot like this so he still gets the volley misses this one or well, happens to miss it but he still had plenty of time to make that volley and it's because his forehand is so powerful I think and has a right hander with it running forehand on the back foot a little bit there but generally for most players I think that's not the, the way to go down the line, as Demonor does, as Leighton Hewitt used to do, by the way, and come in. Just like that. Because on that occasion, if Alcaraz recovers in time and gets a racket on it, it's going to be a floating reply. 15, and with 13. volleys as good as Demonor, he then wins the point most likely. Made him change direction there. Too good. And he runs through the ball, is his technique, which takes a bit of extra time away from the guy down the other end. Looks like he 14, wouldn't blow 30. a candle out, doesn't he? Alex, Demonor? Both of them look fresh. An hour 49 minutes. A little deep breath there, but uh, generally he feels... Oh, it looks like he's not stressed at all in terms of physicality. Advantage, Alcaraz. to a third here that is Carlos Alcaraz seven games to five fights back to take the second seven five and we're off to a match tiebreaker when we return
Well, that was a good response from Carlos Alcaraz. Defended that match point. Demon got off to the fast start, led 4 1 after taking the first set. He said at the time, half the crowd were cheering for the win for the Australian, the rest wanted the match to continue. They're going to enjoy a match tiebreaker. The good news, John, is everyone feels like a winner in this situation. We've had a set each. We'll have a tie break, see what happens. Depending on where you're joining us, we're just discussing in the break. Everyone feels like a winner at one set apiece. <laughs> I guess so. And I think uh, his Spanish compatriot there, who's an Atletico Madrid fan, is still giving it to Carlos. <laughs> and he's laughing at the change of ends, looking back. He must be a stand-up comedian, his mate, I think. <laughs> Time. I think his friend was doing a, an interview for the fans inside the stadium here, and Carlos was reacting to that. That's been an enjoyable evening. Carlos, of course, a real. Ladies and gentlemen, a 10 point fan. match tiebreak will now be played to decide the match. Match tiebreak, Alex well, Diminor to serve. The odds are this will be fun. One zero, Dimitrov. The rhythm of the point was interesting. 24 shots, one of the longest rallies we've seen. Two, zero. Started off fast and furious, then pace went off a fraction. Alcaraz not satisfied with that, and that brought the error. Start for Alex here. Three zero. Demino.
4-0. Diminol. Well, David, one of these Five, next two, zero. and he's going to be very hard to catch. Diminol. So a welcome change of ends for Five, uh, one. Selkaraz. Didn't Demino. like that other end. 5-1. You have a very different perspective, I think, playing a first to ten tiebreaker, a match tiebreaker, than a regular seven-point tiebreaker. It feels it's, like you've got a little more time to you, you recover. Really and when you get ahead, it seems a long way to, to the, the finish, finish line. <laughs> <laughs> so it works on both sides. Alcaraz is going to need to rely on that finish line being a little way away. take forehands like that for granted sometimes. Five, this is an extraordinary two. shot. Dimino. And that was no snack either to finish it off. Six two. Dimino. Brilliant play. Even Alcaraz acknowledges the brilliance of Demonor. Superb tennis. Yep. Superb. 7 2. Demonor. It just looked like Alcaraz was giving him the work over, and then all of a sudden, this shot defense into attack into point one. I think he liked it. Can this go to five sets, please? <laughs> Seven three. Dimino. A3, Dimino. So two points away and two serves to come. 
for Alex Dimonor. you look at this this is an impressive performance from Dimino. Nine three. And Dimino. And he's just riding a wave of confidence. And let's hope that he can settle and maintain a level close to this for two weeks. So six match points. One more big serve, perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. Continues by Alex Dimonor. Just over two hours of enthralling and entertaining tennis. And it's an exhibition match, but it's a great win. It's the best 20 bucks I've ever spent. <laughs> And the final point was a snapshot of the entire night. And they've both got a lot out of this, I think. But what a run Alex Dimonor is on. So it took three sets. Dimonor the first 6-4. Alcaraz... The second 7-5 and then the tie break 10-3 in favour of Alex Dimonor to take the win. We'll take a little break. We're going to come back and Adam Peacock is going to catch up with our two combatants on a wonderful night of tennis here at Melbourne Park. So some great highlights of a wonderful match. And Fitzy, you said that Carlos Alcaraz will take a lot from this and clean up a little bit. I think he'd be pretty satisfied. And for Demonor, again, was able to finish it off. Yeah, I, I, yes, I, I think a fair summation because there were a few shots that uh, Carlos Alcaraz at his best uh, didn't make tonight. Uh, well, would have made if he was at his best tonight. And so he just overplayed his forehand a little bit at times. But... I bet it's a, an interesting concept to go against someone that's this quick because there's not many around that can move around a tennis court like uh, Demon Orr. And it really is uh, an interesting confrontation when you get out there and you, you're hitting the ball this hard and it keeps coming back with interest sometimes. And I, I thought the shot making was magnificent from both players. There was variety, it was all court play, it was so entertaining. Just goes to show how talented they both are. And Demon or rising to a new level, isn't he? And a level of consistency as well. He was under pressure on multiple occasions, fought his way out, fought his way back, but an impressive match tiebreak to finish when it was in dispute. And there's the match point just catching the edge of Alcaraz's racket. And they've both got a lot out of this. And the crowd, as you said, $20 well spent. <laughs> I can't believe you had to pay to get in here and commentate. That's a first. <laughs> well, I know I paid for my $20. I'm not sure about Quite you. Well. 
not sure I should reveal. <laughs> now that was really entertaining stuff and and uh, a pleasure. Just shows the level you've got that, yeah. that we're going to expect oh, over yeah. the next two weeks. And the the quality of the tennis and what these young men are producing and women, both sides. The best in the world are here, yeah. David. It's sad not to have the great man, Rafa. Last week. Be right. It's yeah. the, the quality. You know, we've been doing the qualities this week, and the quality of some of that tennis has been extreme. And they're not even in through to the main draw yet. So it's tantalising what we're looking forward to. We're about to join Adam Peacock. Welcome back to Rod Laver Arena. What a special night to open opening week, if you like, on this famous court. Alex De Menor and Carlos Alcaraz going head to head in a match that looked like it was going to be over before it was, and then it continued, and, and we got to that match tiebreaker. An outstanding tennis, and the match point summed it up. And everyone in this arena, I think, enjoyed it to start. Did you not? And Alex, the, the good times roll this Australian summer. Um, your level, is it, well, it's obviously where you want it to be, but is it where it is, where it's never been before? Yeah, look, I'm extremely happy. Um, my level is in a good spot coming into Melbourne. I've had a good 2024. It's been very, very good to me, so hopefully I can keep it going. And uh, I'm excited to get started here in Melbourne in front of you guys. And Carlos, um, I mean, two hours on court, exactly what you need to welcome you back to Melbourne? Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, this, uh, let's say, first match that I, that I played, you know, uh, in, this, uh, in this 2024, uh, as you said, I need hours on court. Uh, and I think this, uh, there's not a better way, you know, to, uh, let's say, warm up or, or getting ready, you know, uh, playing against, uh, against Alex in, the, in this match who I was on court. So I think uh, I'm, uh, I'm getting ready. We've got a special photo to show you, to put that smile at you. The, the smile is never far away from your face, but uh, if you want to have a look at the back of the court, it's you with a pretty famous trophy. Oh, there it is up there, the top. Where is the trophy and how many times a day do you look at it when you're at home? Uh, it's in the living room, so every uh, every time that I have a lunch, breakfast, dinner at home, you know, I look at that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, remember good times uh, in Wimbledon. I think the, there is a uh, there is not a better place, you know, to, to put a trophy to, to see it uh, every day. Yeah, well done again, mate. It was it was an incredible match against Novak, who we'll see tomorrow night. And Alex, obviously, Carlos has just burst onto the scene, like that other Spanish guy that burst onto the scene about 20 years ago. And, and yours has been a, a longer process, but a lot of people involved in, in where you've got to. And obviously, this is not the end point. It's like, oh, wow, top 10 player. Thanks very much. I'll put the rackets up and I'm done. There, there's more to come. What's, what's to come? Where, where's the headroom in your game, do you think? Well, look, we'll just have to wait and see. Hey, um, no, I've... Um I heard a, a pretty good quote is, uh, how big would you dream if you knew you couldn't fail? So that's uh, kind of been the motto. I'm, I'm pushing myself every day and, you know, hopefully uh, the sky's the limit. Yeah, awesome. I'm sure those Hot Shots kids heard it or they've gone out for ice cream, I'm not sure. But, um, Alex, you, you've got a nice message from your partner as well, Katie, on, on social media um, to congratulate you, top 10. Um, there it is up there. I, I don't know how it works these days. Did she actually say it to your face as well or did you just put it out there on social media? Look, I'm actually surprised she said something nice about me. Oh. <laughs> Normally, every time she goes on social media to you know, reply to my post or whatever is always uh, having a dig at me. So it's, it's nice every now and again to get a compliment out of her. Uh, but no, she's been uh, unbelievable support. She's had a great start to the year as well. And uh, 
I'm sure she'll have a great Australian summer. And Carlos, you're, you're of the generation. We've got Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook. What kind of guy are you? Where, where do you fall with all of those? I go with uh, Instagram a lot. Yeah. Uh, Twitter a lot. TikTok a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I'm not really good at dancing, so uh, <laughs> and, uh, that's all. That, that's all for me. Fair enough, enough. Enough, I think. We, we had a look at some of the photos you've been posting, Calvin Klein, but we decided not to show it. It's a family time slot the, the, this <laughs> evening. But, yeah. <laughs> No, here, please, no. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, but you, you took your shirt off over there and a, and a few people went a bit wild as well. There you go. How have you found that side of tennis, getting really famous, famous really quickly? Well, uh, I mean, I'm feeling like, uh, let's say, normal. I'm a normal guy, you know. I uh, try to take it as a, normal, uh, as a normal thing, you know, but uh, as you said, uh, I... Uh, well, my, my life changed a little bit, you know, outside of tennis. Uh, I'm, as you say, I got uh, famous so, so quickly, uh, you know, and uh, everywhere that, I, that I'm going. But, uh, you know, I try not to think about that. I just, uh, you say, with a smile on my face uh, every time. Uh, and I, yeah, as I said, I try to uh, take it uh, as uh, normal as I can, you know, mm. and I think I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing the Awesome. And um, no doubt you'll have plenty of support here. And Alex as well, you want this crowd to bring the noise these next two weeks for you? It gives you that little extra? 100%. I mean, the louder the better. Uh, I want to feel all the energy. Um, I'm doing my best for you guys every time. And uh, yeah, let's bring the noise, Australia. And Carlos is a fan as well. He's revving the crowd up. Carlos, Alex, thanks so much for giving us an enjoyable experience tonight. It was awesome to watch um, live. It's great to have you back and in Melbourne and, and firing and um, bring on the Australian Open. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mate. Thank you very much. Carlos Alcaraz and Alex Dimonor. Fantastic way to start things on opening week here at the Australian Open uh, on Rod Laver Arena. We've got so much more to come this week here and we've got tomorrow night we've got Novak and friends so Novak Djokovic, Stefanos Tsitsipas, Maria Sakkari, Arena Sabalenka and sporting stars from around Australia that you might know around the world as well joining Novak on court the legend of the Australian Open will really get things going tomorrow we've got the draw and then another night on Friday night and then the real thing starts on Sunday with the first ever Sunday start to an Australian Open so that's all from Rod Laver Arena this evening, Carlos Alcaraz, Alex Dimonor, a real show. And look forward to your company. Plenty more over the next two and a half weeks.